Hey you guys. So I scored this cheese box at the thrift store. Whenever I see these, I always pick them up because they're so much fun to decorate. Um, and so I'm gonna be recreating this today to fit into my space. Um, I'm gonna make it look like more industrial kind of steampunky, but you could make it look, you know, springy or pretty. It's pretty much a blank slate, right? Um, I'll be using my recycled um, dress form project block paper today. You guys probably know by now, it's one of my favorites. Um, and I have a couple of transfers here, a transfers laid out from I ILD. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do. So I have the um, transfer, the exploration transfer, which is more about travel, but there are some really cool steampunky elements in here. And you guys know the entomology is one of my favorites, all time favorites. Um, and then I also have my fronds transfer out. So I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do, but I think that whatever it is, it's going to be fun. Hi, my name is Royce Hunt Bell from Royce Cycle Treasures. Let's get started. So this piece right now is pretty light. I think it's really cool because the nails on here are copper, which is like extra coolness, but it's a little too light for what I want to do. So we're going to do a couple of things. I am going to have to paint the top because I do want to decoupage the top, but I don't want to decoupage the rest of it. I want to leave the wood grain, but I do want to darken it. So we're going to use Wise Owl's glaze to actually stain the wood on this piece. So I just have Wise Owl and Java is what I have here in my bottle. And it's a really rich brown. Um, sometimes if I want to deepen the color a little bit, I'll add um, Wise Owl's Black Walnut to my Java. But today I'm just going to use the Java by itself because I want this to be a pretty warm palette. And so I'm just going to mist this with my misting spray bottle. I don't want to wet it. I want to mist it just a little bit so that the wood fibers start to open up and they can absorb the pigment that's in the glaze. And just like with any other um, stain, I'm going to rub it in there and then I'll wipe it back. I find that I have certain things that I always pick up when I'm shopping at the thrift store, like chairs, um, boxes, I don't know. If I see it, I'm going to get it. Like, what's the thing that you guys like always pick up when you go thrift store? Look at that. Super quick, really deep, beautiful color, right? And just like that, it's all staying and ready to go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, easy soap and water cleanup too, which is my other favorite part. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry, you guys, and I went ahead and stained the rim. Let's pay our t um, turn our attention to our top. I am going to just do a quick light coat. Um, I'm using Wise Owl and um, Mohair, but you guys can find this color, um, or close to this color, it's called Restoration. And I'm using this because it's a warm white. And I really want to keep that warm feeling throughout um, my whole piece. Whenever I'm thrift shopping, I always find that I'm attracted to buying like wood boxes or interesting containers. I like them because you can design them or decorate them to like fit into your space. And they can also serve um, a functional purpose in your space to put photos or um, things that you don't need to access, access that often but that you want to keep in the space. You can even keep the husband's um, remote control in here. Just saying. So for this project, I'm going to be using the um, Dress Form Project Blocks, which you guys know, I love this paper. And I want to use the dark sheet today. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off the bottom because I know I'm not going to use any portions of these. And I can save these for another project on another day. 
Now the Recycle Decoupage papers come in 20 inch by 30 inch sheets. So when you guys are buying these from the retailers, you're getting a really big bang for your buck. And the 18 pound tissue is nice because it's not as um, light as regular tissue. So it's a lot more forgiving, but it's still thin enough that it's like perfect for decoupage. So I want to use my dark dress form. And I know that she's going to be a little shy, so I'm gonna, it's going to bleed into this one a little bit, but I'm going to be okay because um, it's still going to look good, and I may camouflage the line with some transfers later. So I'm just going to take my finger around that edge so I can kind of get a sense of where to cut my paper. And I think I need to scoot that over just a little bit. Oh, man. Now I know exactly where I need to trim it and I'm going to cut about a half an inch over just to give myself a little room for error just in case the paper shifted or something happened when I was making my mark. I'm going to be using Wise Owl's One Hour Enamel to decoupage today because I'm probably going to be using transfers over the top of this paper and I know that my One Hour Enamel and my transfers play really well together. making sure I'm completely covered. Now, if you're looking for a more detailed video on decoupage, I do have several videos where I go step by step by step over the decoupage um, process, and you can find those videos here. So I'm decoupaging over a slatted surface, right? Because we have slats of wood that run across. For my project, I'm gonna ignore those slats, but if you are working with a slatted surface, um, the way that you can approach it is to decoupage the whole surface as if they're not there. Um, you do want to weigh into your paper is completely dry. So if you're working on a wood surface, you want to make sure that not only your surface is dry to the touch, but that there isn't any moisture in the wood either. And then use a really sharp um, blade to go through and um, cut through your slats so that they're nice and clean. If you're finding that you have like extra paper in the slats, if they're pretty wide, you can just take a piece of sandpaper and fold it in half and go through those slats and you can sand them um, to clean them up so that you have a nice clean looking um, decoupage, even though you're decoupaging over a, sl a slatted surface. I have a couple of areas that didn't tack around the edges, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to go back over them with more products um, and just tack that down. Whenever I'm decoupaging a piece, I'm really focused on making sure that I get good adhesion in the middle because you have few options on how to repair that. And I find that I often have areas around the perimeter of my piece that haven't adhered well. So whenever I'm decoupaging, I always take my hand and just kind of go around the edge and you see how I have that edge there to make sure that everything is tacked down really well because all I have to do is add more product in there and that's gonna lay down. And because I've already trimmed the piece, I don't have to worry about um, getting some of my decoupage medium in a place where I don't want the paper to stick and having it stick there because it's already perfectly trimmed. Isn't that party? So now that I have it all decoupaged, we can actually layer on top of the decoupage and add some other elements. And so, I love playing with layers and just building things. It really gives you the option to create something that's custom even though you're buying products that everyone else has access to. What do I want to use? That is the question. I don't know why I'm kind of drawn to this one today.
if you're ever applying a transfer um, and you figure out once you've already laid your transfer down that your surface still has some moisture and your transfer isn't sticking, don't panic. Just leave the transfer there, walk away from your project, let it dry completely, and then you'll be able to come back and actually apply your transfer. If you keep messing with it and trying to get it to work when your surface isn't dry, you're just going to tear up your paper or your paint. In either case, that's a good idea. So, you guys, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. I think I like it just like this. I think if I put anything else on there, it's just going to be for the sake of putting something on there, which is not what I want to do. So, I like her just the way she is. Although, I think she can probably use a little bit of grunginess. Let's add that. And I'm going to be using Iron Orchid Designs ink for this. Um, you can use your ink like from your scrapbooking and stuff, but... I find that when I go to clear coat my project that that ink runs no matter how long I let it sit. And I like using the Iron Orchid Design ink because um, it cures and I'm able to seal over the top of it and I don't have to worry about it running. So I'm going to use a mixture of, this is stone gray, so it's not quite black. It's like almost black. Um, and I'm actually going to mix it with some of the turmeric. The turmeric is like a really, really warm gold color. So, um, I really like it. And I don't need a ton, right? So I'm gonna mix those together. And I'm actually gonna need some more of the dark. And if you're working with Iron Orchid Design ink, um, you can either let it sit for a few hours to let it cure, or you can be like me and cheat. I use my um, craft gun in order to cure, cure my ink so that I can seal it without having to worry about it running. I'm gonna pick up a little black I really do want it to be a little grungier than that. The turmeric is nice though because it's really warm but I just want it to be darker. Yeah there we go. And so I do have to bring in the black you guys because the gray just wasn't darkening that turmeric enough for me. I really want it to be super grungy. I don't lose all of my turmeric with the black. We'll see what happens. That is so perfect. I love it. And I am going to hit it with my dryer. So, if you're working with Iron Orchid Design inks, they do cure so that you're able to use your water-based sealers to seal them. Um, the secret is to either A, wait like six to eight hours and it will cure, or you can cheat and use your craft dryer. Just know that you're not just drying your ink, but you're actually going to use the heat to cure your ink. So that's it, you guys. That's our cheese box turned into something that's a little bit more industrial, kind of steampunkish, that'll fit into my living room space. I'm probably going to put, what should I put in here? I don't know. I'll put something in here, whether it's pins or maybe I'll put my receipts in here and I'll keep track of them better. But um, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, you can find any of the supplies that you saw me use on my website at RoyCycle.com. If you guys like today's tutorial, be sure and subscribe. We upload new videos every week. If you hit the bell, you'll actually get an alert when we do upload a new video. Um, there isn't anything that I did today that you guys cannot do. You guys remember, you can do this and you can do it today.